Man, but we love you enough to come out and just tell you, man, if you know a lot of people that have died, chances are you know somebody already that's in hell. Their fate is sealed. There's nothing they can do about it. Uh, but I guarantee you, they are crying out. Oh man, won't someone, won't somehow, somebody tell my friend, my family member about this terrible place so they won't have to come here. And that's what we want to do. That's what we want to do because we know there are people and it's too late. But it's not too late for you. Hey, you still have breath in your lungs. We still have a heartbeat. It's not too late. Let today be the day of salvation for you folks. Oh, what a beautiful day. What is it, the 16th, 14th? <laughs> Whatever day, I think it's the 14th. Let June 14th, 2010 be the day of salvation for you. Oh man, you won't even care who, who won what, what wrestling match. You won't even know, you won't even remember. Uh, the only thing you'll remember about today was this was the day that you were lost and now you're found, you're blind, and now you can see. So your knee, the Bible tells us that one day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So since you're going to do it anyway, don't you think you should, you should plan on saying it with great joy on that day? Man, bow your knee now and confess with your tongue now that Jesus Christ is Lord. So when you say it again on that day, it's going to be awesome. It'll be the greatest thing you ever said. Because God will then will say, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter into thy rest. And you'll be able to be seen by God as holy and righteous and perfect. But not because you are or deserved it or earned it. But because when God looks at you, He'll see Jesus Christ. Because you'll be washed in the blood. Your sins were atoned for through the death and resurrection and shed blood of Jesus Christ. But since your knee is going to bow and your tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, do it now. Because if you don't do it and you take your last breath, some drunk driver hits you tonight and that's it for you. You planned on living to be 80 or 90, but today's date was the second date on your tombstone. You didn't even know it yet. Oh, man. Say it now because you're still going to bow your knee. You're still going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Oh, but you're going to say those words. You're going to cry them out in sheer terror. Because Jesus Christ says, Behold, you'll have His angels cast you, bind you hand and foot, cast you in a lake of fire. Who wants that? For crying out loud. Who wants that? Let's get serious, folks. Let's get serious. we got to get serious about, about God. God doesn't think our sins are funny or cute. Well, these ladies down here, they need to know that Jesus Christ said, that if, you're the ca if you cause anyone to sin, any one of these little ones to sin, it'd be better for you that a millstone be tied around your neck and you'd be cast into the sea. Also, when women are dressing immodestly, in Jesus' own words, it'd be better than a millstone were tied around your neck and you'd be cast into a sea. Oh man, what a shame, what a waste. What a lovely lady. To have Jesus say, it'd be better for you. What's going to be worse than that? He's got something worse planned. Cover it up, ladies. If you're causing a man to sin, you're guilty of, you're guilty of a sin yourself. You know, the difference between a false convert and a true Christian. A false convert just wants Jesus so they don't have to pay the penalty for their sin, but they can just keep going on sinning as much as they want. They say, oh, I love to sin. I just don't want to have to pay the penalty for it. So why don't you give me that Jesus thing? I'll say a prayer real quick. And uh, now Jesus paid everything, so I'm good to go. I can sin as much as I want now. Do you think Jesus Christ died on a cross so that you could sin more? I don't think so. I think Jesus Christ died on a cross to pay for the sins you've committed against God and also to free you from them. So you could go into sin no more. There's lots of paths that will take you into hell. Lots of ways. There's only one narrow path that's going to lead you into God's kingdom. It ain't your good works. It ain't your righteousness. It's the shed blood of Jesus Christ. That's it. It ain't intolerant. It ain't closed-minded. It's awesome. Man, don't you want to worship a God who gives us one simple, surefire way to get back into His kingdom? A place that you don't belong to be in and I don't belong? Because What's that? Oh yeah? How do you know? What are you going to say when God says, Why should I allow you into my kingdom? What? <laughs> I hope you speak up a little bit better to God. I, ho I hope those words were, I repented and trusted in Christ. You mumble something other than that to God, it ain't going to be any. It ain't gonna be too good for you. You won't mumble in front of God, man. You'll cry out, give me mercy, give me mercy. Oh man, I hope God doesn't pour out His judgment on any of you guys out here. 
One day, God's either going to pour out His wrath and judgment on you, or He's going to shower you with His mercy. Don't you want God's mercy? For crying out loud, He creates a universe. You don't want His wrath. You don't want His judgment. You'll face it. You'll face it one day. Unless you've humbled your heart before God. Turn from your sin. Say, God, you made one way, just like you did in Egypt that night, when the angel of death passed over. That lamb's blood, that shed blood of an innocent lamb, that was the one way. I didn't understand it. I don't know why that worked. But God, you gave us that one way, and it worked. Because they followed what you said. And I don't know why God wants to give me mercy when I deserve justice and I deserve an eternity in hell. But for some reason, He wants to give me mercy. And He took the penalty that I deserved. I should have been the one hanging up on a cross. I should be the one spending eternity in hell. But God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Man, it was my hand that held the hammer. Your hand that held the nails that drove into Jesus' hands and feet. We put Him up there. You understand that? God of the universe, and we put Him up on a cross. You know, if you've never turned from your sin and trusted in Christ, you're condemned already. And... You know, you're, you're just sitting, sitting in God's hand. It's only God's mercy that's keeping you from being in, in hell right now. You're sitting there in God's hand, in His merciful, long-suffering hand, over the pit of hell where you belong. You know, and instead of, instead of holding on tight to that hand or saying, God, move me away from this pit. Oh man, you're, you're, you're dancing around in His hand. You're, you're taking a big pin and you're poking His hand, saying, oh man, let me fall in. Oh, it looks so good. No. And don't be fooled. God will not be mocked. God will not be mocked. Don't think you're getting away with anything. Don't think, hey, I've lied a million times. I've stolen stuff. I've fornicated. I've been drunk. Where's this wrath of God? Where's this judgment? What a bunch of what a bunch of garbage. No. You know, delayed justice does not mean the absence of justice. Man, you better you better pray. You better thank God that He's given you another chance. He's giving you another chance because if God gave you justice, and the first time you sinned, bam, you'd be gone like that. You'd be gone right then. But God's giving you mercy. He's giving you another chance. The fact that you've sinned against God but are still alive means that God is merciful and long-suffering. He's even sent a couple, of, a couple of crazy guys out on the street to shout at you with a megaphone to tell you, turn, turn from your sins and trust in Christ. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that on Judgment Day? And God's going to show you, God's going to replay the 10 million times you've heard the Gospel message. The 10 million times you've seen it on TV, you've heard it in church. You know, He's going to say, for crying out loud, well, there's a guy with a megaphone shouting in your ear and you still didn't repent? For crying out loud, folks, hell is real. If hell wasn't real, I'd be at home sitting on my couch eating potato chips. But it is real and we don't want you to go there. And have you turned from your sin, folks? Have you trusted in Christ? Or are you just the walking dead? Looks like a bunch of zombies walking around. Oh, brains, oh, sin, oh, lust. No, turn from it. Be born again. Man, if, if you haven't been born again, if you haven't repented, trust in Christ, you are a zombie out here, folks. You're walking around dead and you don't even know it. But be born again, folks. Be born again. Unless a man be born again, he cannot inherit the kingdom. Born again doesn't just mean saying a quick prayer and then going out and sinning just as much as you ever did all the time before. No. By this we know that we know Him if we obey His commands. Because anyone who says, I know God, but doesn't keep His commands is a liar and the truth is not in Him. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says they claim to know God, but by their actions they deny Him. If anyone looked at you, would, would they have any evidence that you're a Christian? If you're a Christian, has your life changed? Has he turned a heart of stone to a heart of flesh? I mean, has there been a change of mind? Has there been a change of heart? If you're a true Christian, man, you probably should have lost some friends. There should, should be some people that don't want to hang around you anymore. Oh man, she ain't fun anymore. She doesn't want to get drunk. Oh man, he ain't fun anymore. Man, he won't go out and steal stuff like we used to. Have a good time. No. If you turn from your sin, if you're a true Christian, you probably should have lost some friends. There should probably be some cousins that don't want to sit to you, sit by you at Thanksgiving. They don't want any any bit of what you have. Oh man, until they realize one day that they're dead in their own sins. 